Hey everyone, and welcome to my first devlog where I share my experiences with development and hopefully can help you along the way as well. I recently have started development on a dream game of mine where you explore a world full of mystery, adventure, and dark secrets. I've always loved how Zelda games, Ocarina of Time in particular, have been able to portray the sense of adventure and danger. You are exploring this exciting world with many interesting things to come across, but there are certain moments that the game takes these sinister turns that require true bravery on your part to traverse. You quickly realize that while everything seems fine on the surface, there are dark secrets to uncover. This concept is one of the main things I want players to experience while playing my game. I quickly decided that a robust combat system was a very important part of the game, so I decided to start developing this system as soon as possible. So without further ado, let's jump in. First, I needed an enemy. Since I'm still working on building out systems, I didn't want to worry about 3D modeling and animating an enemy right now, so I grabbed this amazing and free asset off the Unity Asset Store. I decided to use scriptable objects for my enemy objects. Each scriptable enemy stores all of the main variables that are needed to control that enemy. I then implemented a custom inspector, which allowed me to do more complex logic, like creating this custom enemy attack set editor. Since I didn't want to have to animate every single enemy by hand, creating a specific animator for every enemy was out of the question. Instead, I created one base animator, which contains all of the enemy states. Each of these states has a script attached to it that controls what happens when the enemy is in that state. To share this animator between all enemies, I created an animator override for each enemy type. In this case, I have my skelly animator override, which I will add to my Skelly enemy scriptable object. Next, we can look at the different states available. First is the patrol state. If we activate the patrol state, we can see we have multiple different fields to control the speed and acceleration of the enemy's nav mesh. We can then select the has waypoints option, which allows me to add waypoints to the enemy. These line gizmos are all controlled by a function in the enemy manager script called onDrawGizmos. This allows us to see gizmos used for development, which really comes in handy. We can also select random waypoints, which will randomize which waypoints the enemy traverses to. Next, we can select field of view settings. This allows the enemy to actually see the player. First, we can adjust the viewing angle, which we can see updating with our widget. We can also adjust the field of view radius, which makes the enemy be able to see further away. Now that the enemy can see us, it would be pretty boring if it didn't do anything about it. So let's take a look at the chasing state. The chasing state allows us to set the new speed and acceleration for the enemy once they start chasing the player. But currently the enemy just runs into you. That's kind of boring. So let's add a strafing state. The strafing state says once the enemy gets close enough to the player, switch into a state where they will move randomly in a circle around the player. This is controlled by the start strafe distance. The min and max strafe times are used to determine when the enemy will switch the position it is strafing to, which makes the enemy feel a little more fluid and natural. The effect works pretty well, although not perfect, and definitely needs more work. But for now, let's add more skeletons. Next is my favorite part of this custom system, the attack settings. For this, I ended up creating a custom editor for my inspector that allows me to add attack sets. An attack set in this context is basically a list of attacks that the enemy will perform in a row. For example, I can add an attack set called attack slash dodge with a range of three. That means once the player enters the range, the enemy will perform this attack. I can add multiple attacks to the set, which means the enemy will perform the attacks in succession. In addition, we can add an attack movement to each specific attack, which allows us to move an enemy in dynamic ways while an attack chain is being performed. For example, in this case, I have the enemy perform the skelly knockback animation. This animation will first move the enemy away from the player, starting at the beginning of the animation. The next movement slightly moves the enemy to the left, starting at the same point as the previous animation ended. This allows me to create these attack chains very easily and quickly with minimal code. Now keep in mind, this system is far from perfect. 
there is still a lot of work to do to add more functionality as well as clean up the nav mesh agent movement. For example, while using the same attack set with multiple skeletons, because of how the nav mesh agent is set up, it kind of makes it look like a bunch of skeletons ice skating around the player. In my next devlog, I'm going to focus a lot more on cleaning up the enemy nav mesh agent movement and refactoring some of these systems. Anyways, everyone, that's it for my first devlog. If you have any questions or thoughts, please let me know in the comments. For those who enjoyed the video, please consider liking the video. And for those of you who want to see more devlogs like this one, subscribing with the notification bell on will help you stay up to date. With that, thanks for joining me for this devlog, and I'll see you next time.